afternoon all aspirants viewers and yet to be data scientists or people who are already data scientists and looking for a new job welcome to another session with me varun on tech tablet and in this session we would be looking at our language in specific and technical questions and uh, interview question answers or you know everything related to our language just for you to get a job right and if in case you like my videos you can connect to me on facebook or instagram on the ids mentioned below it is varunda underscore gemini at yahoo.com if it is facebook and it will be varunda underscore gemini if it is instagram well going forward guys this is me well i was an a back developer earlier and currently i'm working as um you know as a data scientist okay well be, you know in between being uh, an a backer and being a data scientist i also worked on sap ui5 which is the main reason i am into data science today this technology has given me the exposure like html javascript css all these front end technologies because of which a lot has become easy for me at least as far as python or machine language or deep learning is concerned so all those of you who really are looking forward to get into data science guys this is really a lovely field the only problem is you got a lot a whole lot to look into a whole lot to know about because no matter how big how interesting the field is this field is still very very raw right so yeah and what all did we cover we did look at a lot of interview questions on python tensorflow r language and other related concepts as well and uh, in future we would be looking at a free technical learning series right and we already started we already covered decision trees random forest naive based theorem and other question answers on um, data science right so now in this specific video let us just begin understanding the technical question answers required for our language so the first one that i have for you is can you list out some of the functions that r provides well these are just some of the functions right it mean median distribution covariance regression non linear mixed effects glm gam there are a lot of lot of models that you can talk about right well when you say glm what do you mean by glm guys good if you know and if you do not know please use the comment section below explore about this specific functionality in google and please write it in the comment section below the second one that i have for you is what is a transpose well for whenever you want to reshape your data before you further push it for analysis right r gives you different methods okay and also it, it transposes they, they are you know basically to reshape your data according to your requirement now the transpose of a matrix or a data frame if you want to do that t is the function that is used right now please do not get confused this for t tests t tests is used to see if two means of a model are closely related or not right okay the third one how can you start the r how can you start r using the commander you know in gui well to start the r commander you would have to type the command which is r cmdr okay now this would go into your uh, you know after you hit your windows you you hit uh, otherwise you can do the windows plus r you would be opening your command prompt and then you can do or you can enter this r cmdr after which the r commander would be open for you the fourth one is explain how is data aggregated in r well when you want to aggregate data or or in other words you want to collapse data you can use you know one or more by variables okay the word by now what happens you know it really becomes easy when you use by variables okay and when using the aggregate you know this function by it should be used in a list okay within a list it cannot be used independently so as long as you are following these two factors you would see that your data is getting aggregated the fifth one that i have for you is what is r markdown and what is its use well guys not withstanding what r markdown is whenever you are answering any question or whenever you are looking to learn any question or any answer the first thing that you should be able to do is the moment you get the question to you please hit the pause button think about the answer for a second try to frame answers yourself and then try to look as to what is it that's provided for because doing that way it would give you great effects the first thing is you would be sure of what 
I mean, you would also be knowing that you know the answer firstly and secondly, you would also be able to cross verify on the spot if your answer is correct or not, right? So whenever you get a question, pause the screen, take a minute to answer and then please go ahead. Right. So again, coming back to the question, what is our markdown? Well, it's basically a reporting tool that is provided by R. Okay. And with the help of this, that is our markdown, you would be able to create some extraordinary reports using your R coding paradigm. And the output would be in three formats. It would either be in HTML or PDF or Word. Now, when I say Word, you can say Microsoft Word to the closest. Right. The sixth one is, Mention how can you produce correlations and covariances? Well, this is the most easiest, the most dumbest question of the entire lot. Well, if you want to use correlations, it would be COR function. And if you want to use covariances, it would be COV function. This again, followed by a dumb question is a very brilliant question. Okay. This is what is principal component analysis also identified as PCA by most of us. And how do you create a PCA model in R? Well, firstly, even before we get into the technical explanation of what PCA is and why, where and why do we use it, do we all know where PCA is used and why is it used? Well, it is used for a broad range of purposes like dimensionality reduction techniques. For example, you can talk about facial recognition, computer vision, and also image compression, all these are some basic applications. Notwithstanding these, it's also used to find some patterns in data where you have very high dimension and it then breaks down this data to either lower dimension or equal number of feasible dimensions, right? So this is what it does. Now, what is the effect because of this reduction of dimensionality from 3D to 2D or from 3D to easier 3D? Well, it reduces a lot of chaos that's available in the data. And when you reduce the chaos, you would see that the variance or uh, you know the distribution, things like these would be getting streamlined. Okay, now talking about the concept of principal component analysis and the second part of the question that is how do you create a PCA model? Well, the first thing that you've got to do is, or the first thing that happens in PCA is the data which is acquired is transformed. And now how is it transformed? It's either transformed from 3D to 2D or from 3D into much easier or a feasible 3D. Okay. Now these dimensions which are reduced are called as principal components. Now the first principal component which is produced, it captures the maximum amount of variance. Similarly, the second, it then captures the second most amount of variance in this order. Let us say you have 10th. When 10th principal component is captured, 9th becomes less important. So each and every time a newer PCA or newer PC is captured, the older one becomes less important. Right? Now the same is true for each and every principal component. They are all correlated and each and every time you move ahead, the last one becomes less important. Right? And in order to achieve this functionality, yeah, that is PCA, you use PR comp, P -R -C -O -M -P. This is the function that's used, right? The eighth one for you guys, what is the function used for adding data sets in R? It's again, the most dumbest or probably the most easiest Well, you have R bind. Now, when you use the function R bind, you can join two data frames, right? And these two data frames that are joined, they must be generally having the same variables. Otherwise, they would be considered in two different orders, which again is not, you know, the essence of doing the PCA. Right. The ninth one is why is resampling done? Well, now you just assume a case here that you sample the data once and your sample is now giving you wrong results, right? This is the first case. So when you're estimating the accuracy of sample statistics, statistics by using subsets, of accessible data or by drawing randomly with replacement from a set of data points. Now, I'm very sure this sentence sounds very complex. So breaking this down into easier understanding, it is just to ensure that you're checking your value for different data sets within the same data. Now, let us say you're taking numbers from one to 100. 
Now, you just want to check if your values are working fine for random values. This is the first case where the sampling is done. Secondly, you want to substitute labels on data points when, you, when you're trying to perform some significance test. Thirdly, when you are validating models by using random subsets. So first one and third one are very close to each other, right? Then the last one that I have for you that is explain survivorship bias. Well, it's a logical error. This is an error that's caused, guys. Please keep that in mind. And it, now this error is caused because of focusing aspects that support, you know, surviving some processes. And also there is a very casual overlooking because of which, you know, their lack of prominence is not displayed. Now, again, in short, you're just not reading your data or your data is not being processed properly. Okay. Now, this would lead to wrong conclusions in numerous means, right? So this is what is called as survivorship bias. Well, notwithstanding survivorship bias, there are also different variants of bias. We'll look at each of them in detail in the upcoming video, right? So I really hope you enjoyed watching and I also hope that you learned something new. If in case you did, please hit the like button to let us know and also to encourage us to make more videos and if in case you have any queries please use the comment section below and if you feel that this might be useful for you or at least any of your friends hit the share button thanks a lot for viewing this is me varun rao logging off hoping with an expectation that i would again come back to you and we would talk to each other have a great day and all the best for the for the interview that we're about to appear for